So Sumeru and Dendro have been out for a few months now and many Kaching mains have been, you can say, popping champagne bottles celebrating her rejuvenation. You take Bennett out of her team, instead add a Dendro teammate and aside from the problem of losing healing, it solved a lot of her issues. Outside of her numbers, which Quicken helped, originally her charge attack pushing enemies away and moving backwards at the same time felt really bad to play. And since her charge attack was a major part of her damage before, you often had to spam these charge attacks so her gameplay loop before was tedious to say the least. Also with Dendro, the Thundering Fury set allows you to constantly be spamming her elemental skill and burst, reducing both the need to charge attack and also the actual time you have to charge attack in between skill usage. And now her charge attack itself is less significant part of her kit's damage than before, since Quicken buffs don't really worry about talent values. The truth is, with these quality of life improvements, Kaching is nice to play. Actually, her skill and burst have always been satisfying and her animations have been nice before as long as you ignored the numbers. Now obviously she isn't exactly nuking like Raiden so don't expect huge numbers but still since a lot of these issues have been solved she just feel like a modern character now. Maybe she could have been released recently and I find her gameplay really fun especially weaving in her abilities in between Kozawa's grouping it's very satisfying. So onto the topic of this video, so picking Kaching's Electro teammate. A lot of you might have been shocked with the title, like what am I talking about? A common sentiment you will see online is that Fischl is so overpowered and she is what makes Aggravate good. It's all you see online, whether her teammate is Kaching or Yaimiko or Beido, whoever. They are often evaluated based on how well they drive Fischl. The, you could say the on-field character is just a Fischl driver. So if you're confused by the title, I won't blame you. This truth is something end game Kaching mains and hardcore Kaching mains have known probably since 3.0 came out, but it's not something that's permeated into the mainstream opinion. And just as an experiment, I'm not gonna mention any names in particular, but I did scan through a lot of new Kaching guides on YouTube and as expected, they are all extremely focused on Fischl, Fischl is the best, barely any mentions or considerations of alternate options and in many cases no positive mention of Sar at all. Then why is it that Yaimiko and Kaching speedrunners are getting faster clears with C6 Sara? I'm sure the first thing you might say is of course whales playing with C6 Sara, C6 Kaching, R5 weapons, they're not really playing the same game as us, but no, actually this is still true at the C0 low budget level, you just need to be well invested and paying attention to clear times. So I'm showing you the results from an NGA speedrun cup competition recently for Kaching teams, the link of this will be in the description. I'll also give direct Billy Billy links to some of these runs if it's easier. Going through this page is very interesting personally. So I posted this speed run recently and generally my speeds are about the same if not one or two seconds faster than the fastest ones on Billy Billy. I do try hard and that run was no exception. Like with this team my 52 second time, my time is faster than the other officials except someone who has a C2 Kozor. But these Sara ones obliterate ours, and even some of these times around 40 seconds still have C0 Kerching, C0 Kozawa. The players are just using Sara and they're also good. So why is Sara better than you would think? While it's on paper, even at C6 Sara might not look impressive, her function is to buff the team and bring an AoE nuke. It's easier if you imagine a team's makeup. A character like Fischl has her power budget in raw damage, raw sub DPS damage, but if you consider a character like Sara, while she also does decent damage, a lot of her power budget is in buffing teammates. You could say similar to Shenha in a cryo team. Now knowing this about Sara, if you consider teammates like Kershing or Yaimiko or even Kozawa, they all have AoE damage and front loaded damage. 
So by buffing them, by putting more power budget into these kinds of attacks, you're effectively enhancing important traits of clearing the abyss in general, but also clearing the abyss fast in general. You know, I'm sure a lot of you know the value of front loaded damage. If you look at spreadsheets or sims, Fischl often even does more damage than Kaching. So you might ask why funnel buffs into the weaker teammate? Here's the truth, Kirching's damage contribution in actual practice is a lot and very important in your teams. It's easy to notice this by playing the game especially in AoE Abyss Chambers. You will know that her burst is hitting every enemy and the team kind of feels like it peaks with her burst. See the thing with spreadsheets and sim calculations, they mostly look at single target and they also look at full sustained rotations. The thing many people might notice is that both of these assumptions are very, you could say, very biased and can become very unimportant in practice. For example, what you might see on a spreadsheet, commonly it could have Kirching with about 40% of the team's damage and Fischl with about 50%. Now if you're an endgame player with maybe Mist Blitter or Jade Cutter with good artifacts on your team, does it feel like that? Does it feel like Kirching is doing 30 to 40 percent of the team's damage? Rarely. And these assumptions most people use are with four star weapons, and we know that Fischl is very strong with Stringless. And a lot of Fischl's damage is from her A4 attack, and this isn't really affected by talent levels. And often calculations don't use crown talents either. So you can see how all these things put together can be very friendly towards something like Fischl. Whereas for an Electro DPS or even Kujo Saro's buffs, they can benefit a lot more from higher talents and can get more of an upgrade from a 5 star weapon. Essentially, you could say a lot of calculations can make Fischl be a lot closer to her peak potential than some other characters will. And other characters who have more front loaded AoE damage or have really good 5 star weapons have much more room to grow. But just before you think I'm attacking calculations, these calculations often do have disclaimers and they always state their assumptions. This is not the fault of people calcing, it's just the methodology. But you as a consumer, you should be able to separate and identify theoretical stuff and things which may not translate as well in practice. Now just to clarify, Fischl is still a great option in general and I use her a lot. But also, unfortunately, I only have C2 Sara. I would have shown a speedrun comparison between the two, but I can't. On a side note, I am saving up for a future banner with Sara. So now the question is, okay, Fischl can fall behind in these AoE abysses, but what about a bossing abyss? Since we haven't really had much bossing abysses recently, this is just something we'll have to wait and see what happens. It's hard for me to really say anything by now. Of course, Fischl strengths are more suitable to a single target, but even then, Sara buffing front loaded damage is still beneficial, so it's difficult to guarantee Fischl is superior there either. We'll have to wait and see. Like, if Fischl is relying on sustained damage and constantly triggering her A4 attack, if you think about a boss like Magu Kenki or Mechanical Array with transitional periods and iframes, those fights can be annoying for sustained damage dealers. And again, just to clarify, I don't want to come across too negative to Fischl. I'm just trying to balance the overall perspective. Like on the other hand, instead of those bosses, take Primo Gia Vishap. There's no damage windows or iframes there, so I'm assuming she'll still be very strong there. Like I said, I'm just trying to balance perspectives and this is all part of breaking apart the misconceptions. Now obviously in conclusion, and you should already know, this video is very min-max orientated. It's from a hardcore perspective. Obviously not everyone cares about speed, some people just want to casually do Abyss. And in that case, a character like Fischl is very easy to play whereas some people might find Kujasara or even Yaimiko very difficult to play. That's fine and everyone plays this game in their own way and everyone has their own interests. But this video is just something from my perspective and I know a lot of my viewers are interested in practical gameplay and things people may be overlooking. I hope this insight was helpful and I hope you enjoyed this video.